So for this morning's Christmas Day sermon, my text is 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. There it is on the screen. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. This, if, if we had time to look at it this morning, this comes in two chapters of the Bible, which is all about money and giving and being generous. And the writer's calling upon Christian people to think of other people, think of people they've never met, think of people in need, and give cheerfully and generously. And this is part of his discussion to remind his readers of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. To begin with, he was rich, but of his own free will and choice, for our benefit, he became poor. And by his poverty, we have become rich. Let's just take this verse phrase by phrase and see if we can understand it together and understand a little more of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says to his Christian readers, you know about this. This isn't news to you. But maybe if you're not yet a Christian here today, it is news to you. Grace is the kindness that you don't really deserve. You haven't really done anything to warrant or merit. Sometimes when we give gifts, it's, it's somewhat of an exchange, isn't it? If we're really honest about it, it's a gift but it's a little bit of a transaction as well. So-and-so gave to us last year, so we give to them. So-and-so uh, made Christmas biscuits and brought them around, so we do something similar for them. It's a little bit of a give and take. When I was a young man, many, many years ago, my granddad told me a cautionary tale uh, from the local pub. He warned me of the man who wouldn't buy his round Going to a pub, a group of men. First chap at the bar buys drinks for everybody. They all drink their, their pints of beer. Second chap goes up, he buys in his rounds. Third chap, it's understood it's his turn to do the honours, but he's nowhere to be found. He's making a prolonged visit to the gents out the back. So somebody else buys the round instead. And my granddad warned me, nobody ever bought a drink for that man again. It's a cautionary tale. And it says a lot, really, doesn't it, about the generosity of buying around the generous thing that you do where you buy drinks for all your friends but if they don't buy back for you they're in big trouble well grace is not like that that's not how grace works at all grace is kindness just for the sake of being kind grace is when somebody does something just because they want to do it and they don't particularly look for you to exchange with them something of comparable value and this verse says, this is the attitude of Jesus Christ to us. Grace, kindness. Well, what about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Then? Well, we read next that he started out as being rich. In the beginning, he was rich. What does that mean? We know from elsewhere in the Bible that Jesus Christ existed before he was born. Just read from John's Gospel. In the beginning, when everything began, there was already the Word who was with God and who was God. So this is Jesus Christ before he became a babe. He was rich in that state. He was rich as God, as the one who is with God, as the one who lived at the Father's side. He was rich. He prayed on the night before he died... Father God, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. So even then, even as a man, he's looking back and remembering his situation before the first Christmas, that he had glory with God before ever he became a man. He was rich. He was rich in knowing God. That was his wealth. 
The knowledge of God was his treasure. And when you think about it, money is a poor imitation of the true riches then. Money promises us things that it never delivers. Money promises us things that you can only have through knowing God. So money says to us, if you had more of me, you'd be secure. But it's not true. You can lose it all in a single day. It doesn't matter if you have millions. It just takes a transaction to go wrong, a business deal to fall apart, an enterprise to fail, and it's all gone. Straight away. Real security, real riches, come from knowing God. Similarly, money says to us, look, if you had more of me, you'd have peace of mind. You wouldn't be so worried and stressed if you had bigger savings. But it's a lie, isn't it? You and I have known people who are quite a lot richer than we are. I certainly have. I wouldn't say they're particularly peaceful or contented in themselves. They're full of worries. What if this goes wrong? What if I lose that? Real peace of mind, real contentment, is part of the treasure of knowing God. Money promises us freedom. If you had a bit more money, you could do what you wanted. Go where you want next year on holiday. Buy that bigger house. Trade up your car. Freedom. But of course, real freedom is not so much doing what we want in our pride and independence, but submitting ourselves to God. That is freedom. Are you free to submit yourself to God? In the Bible, in the Psalm, Psalm 119, it says to the law of God's mouth is more precious to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. That man didn't want the, the independence that comes with lots of money. He wanted the true freedom of submitting to God and keeping his law. That is true wealth. Money promises happiness. Work hard and uh, claim that promotion and you'll have more money and you'll be happier. Seems obvious, doesn't it? But again, it's, it's a lie. It's a false promise. Real happiness comes from entering into God's presence after you die and spending forever with him. In your presence, the Bible says, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So the true wealth, the true riches, is very different from what we think. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said in his teaching, don't store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust consume and thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust do not consume and thieves do not break in and steal. That was the kind of riches that Jesus Christ had before ever he was born. He had that kind of wealth of knowing God. And it's priceless in money terms. You can't trade money for it. Years ago, there was a report that Frank Sinatra, just before he died, offered $10 million to the then Pope if he could have a half-hour audience with him. He was trying to buy the true wealth, trying to obtain for himself a kind of wealth that would last him through death and into the next world. I don't know whether he succeeded. But we do know from our verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was rich. He was rich in knowing God. He was rich with the true riches, with the true wealth. But he became poor for our sakes. For your sake, he became poor. What does that mean? Well, we sang in the hymn, thrones for a stable Thrones for a manger did surrender. Sapphire paved court for stable floor. So he was born in poverty then. He was born in the circumstances of a poor family. The stable says that. The manger says that. Later on, when it was time to present the Lord Jesus Christ as a baby in the the ceremony that they had, his family couldn't afford to offer a, a sheep or a kid goat. They had to offer two pigeons in sacrifice because they were poor. He was born into a poor family. And he lived as a poor man in financial terms 
We know that he worked as a carpenter. And when he began his ministry that we read about in the Gospels, there were times where he had nowhere to lay his head. He slept out in the open, slept rough. But all through his life as a man, he was still wealthy in the sense of knowing God. As a man here on earth, his relationship with God was not hindered. He still had the true riches, the real treasure of a close and intimate relationship with God. So he said, for example, He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. For I always do the things that are pleasing to him. John 8, 39. God the Father who sent me is with me. He's not left me alone. I always do the things that are pleasing to him. So when we see that phrase, he became poor, I think we have to look not so much to the birth of Jesus, nor his life, but to his death. The death of Christ. What happened when he died? Well, we know that as he hung dying on the cross, nailed through his wrists and ankles, as one writer says, halfway between earth and heaven, as if rejected by both, we know as he hung there dying, he called out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This wasn't the cry of a man who'd lost his faith. He still believed in God. My God, he called him. But he knew that God had rejected him. God, his own father, had rejected him. If his wealth was knowing God, then this is his moment of poverty, of destitution, of bankruptcy. As he knows in himself and feels in his own person the hostility of God towards human wrongdoing. The hate and rejection of God towards everything that is evil and selfish in human beings like you and me. Though he didn't deserve that treatment, that's what he received. He suffered that rejection, that anger, that hostility of God that we deserve. He became poor for our sakes, you and me. So that by his poverty... We might become rich with the true riches of God. So here's what this means and here's what it means for you and me to become rich through Jesus Christ and his death. We find forgiveness. We're forgiven. Everything that God has against you, everything that God has against you, every quarrel... Every offense, large, small, little, great, long-standing or occasional. Everything he forgives. When you belong to Jesus Christ, he says, that is already paid for. My son suffered for that wrongdoing. You are forgiven. There's a Christmas sack that we have, I think, left over from when our children were little. It's a kind of swag bag that you put presents in. It's in Christmas red. And it says on it, Santa, I have been very good. Open brackets. Most of the time. Close brackets. But knowing God is not about being very good. Most of the time it's about being forgiven for everything. And this is what comes to us through Jesus Christ. He was rich, but he became poor so that we might be forgiven and we might find peace with God. We might say, he's my God. I know him. And we might be able to say, as Jesus Christ said, he has not left me alone. Even though I don't always do the things that are pleasing to him, he's with me. He's still with me. He's still my God. By his poverty, we become rich. Not in financial terms, not in money terms, but in real terms. Knowing God. And this holds promise of a glorious future. That just as Jesus Christ the Son lived with the Father in glory, so we also will come to share that glory. I have a friend who started a new church 
in Bordeaux a couple of years ago, and he wrote an article about it in a magazine that I read recently. He wrote it in French. So in French, what you say is, our church hatched out in 2018. That's how they put it in French. And they've been meeting in a cafe. They rent a cafe on Sunday mornings. Obviously, they've had the ups and downs with lockdowns and so on, just like we have. But when they are able to meet together, there's about 30 of them, uh, families with children and so on, a number of them not yet believers, and that's how they've got started as a church. But uh, what Maxime says is for many, many people living in Bordeaux, many people who won't go to church, many people who are not Christians, he feels that the, the sweetness of Jesus Christ is overshadowed, this is how he put it, the sweetness of Jesus Christ is overshadowed by the sweetness of life in Bordeaux. And people don't realize that much, much better than that fine bottle of Bordeaux red wine, much better is the wine that Christ himself will serve his guests at his heavenly banquet. There is a glorious future for those who are made rich through Christ and his death. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, you know this. You know this. This is not news to you. This is your life. This is your faith. He was rich. But for your sake, for my sake, he became poor. And you, by his poverty, are rich. And you will be rich with a true and lasting wealth. If you're not a Christian, why not turn from your sin Put your trust in Christ and discover the riches of knowing God for yourself.